But the BMW i3 is a whole new thing for BMW. It's part of a new division of BMW called the i Division, and its goal is to make green, eco-friendly, electric and hybrid cars. The i3 is a pure electric car. It only runs on batteries. You can get a little range extender. It will extend the time the battery runs. You get about 80 miles out of this car on the road from one charge, which is pretty good. BMW is also introducing the i8 later this summer. That's going to be a really dramatic sports car, plug-in hybrid with gullwing doors, and it looks really, really fantastic. Oh, we'll go electric in a moment, all right. But before we do, they are all the rage in certain spots across the country. Those tiny little cars that fit into almost any parking space, get gas mileage in the hundreds of miles per gallon, and feel like a glove because you're actually being poured into something about as big and tight-fitting as a glove. So have you thought about your safety in these matchboxes? Time to put the pedal to the metal, bring in the nationally syndicated car coach, knows all, sees all, tells all. Safe for admitting the 69 Dodge Charger is the greatest muscle car ever made, something of which I will continue to chirp <laughs> about every chance I can get on this show or any place else. Lauren Fix joins us today. Hi, Lauren. Oh, hi, Ed. But you know, it's a 65 Shelby GT350. Drive when you love it. Here we go. Here comes here comes the Ford lover. All right, it's okay. Don't I worry about it. I need my daughter, Shelby. What can I say? I, well, see, <laughs> I, I knew that, so that's why I had to go ahead and put that in there. Uh, we'll get to the, the Teslas and the electric cars in a moment, but small cars here. I was looking at the car crashes here, and the, right. the Mini Cooper was the only one of 12 cars to earn a top rating of good in new frontal crash tests. I have to be very honest with you. I'm 6'2", 210 plus. I can't get into one of those cars. I can't feel comfortable and have no idea how people drive those little cars and feel safe. Have you driven the new Mini? It's actually bigger and wider. And this is the Countryman that won now. So it is the all-wheel drive, the four-door. There's plenty of room for 6'2 and 200 plus pounds. Believe me, a lot of people have them. As a matter of fact, I own a Mini and I love it. It's but is it safe? Cool is it yes, safe? Yes, it is. It's built by BMW. My God, there's an airbag every two feet. It's, it's actually a really fun car. And you look at some of the other cars in the category, and I'm literally surprised they didn't do well. Because you're talking about, like, average ratings of the Chevy Volt, the Ford C-Max, which I actually like, uh, the Mitsubishi Lancer, the Scion FRS, and its mate, the Subaru BRZ. They did average. And then the, the marginal was the Hyundai Veloster, the Scion XB. And then, in addition, you're looking at the poor rating, which is kind of sad, is the Nissan Leaf, the Nissan Juke, the Mazda 5, and the Fiat 500L, which is actually a fun little car. But, you know what? BMW, the Germans know how to build cars. What can I say? Is that simply it, that when it comes to the construction of vehicles, that the Germans, BMW, and certain, they just have it over American and Japanese manufacturers in so many ways? I think they, they know how to build cars. I mean, if you look at how they're built, everything's precision. It's about quality of build. It's about quality materials. It's about, it, hey, the Germans build everything like that. I don't care if you're buying, a, you know, anything that's, that I buy that's German. I haven't ever bought anything there that I went, oh, I can't believe I, they, they made this. So I've had some very good luck with not just their cars, but also some of their other products. So I, I, I have to say, Americans, we build good products. It just depends what we're building. So are you then pretty good as far as the safety is concerned on these little cars? Because that was the focus of all it. And certainly we've talked about the Mini Cooper here, but the rest, mm -hmm. are you still comfortable and confident that they are built as safe as they possibly can be? Well, I think what a lot of them are missing is when you're looking at these small cars, is they're missing some of the active cruise control, cross traffic alert, lane change departure, you know, all these things that make these cars that much safer. And they all have, you know, crumple zones and airbags and side impact airbags. This is for an offset test. This is from the IIHS test. So if you drift into oncoming traffic and oncoming traffic hits you, which believe it or not is not that uncommon of an accident, or you, you know, you maybe you drift off the road and hit something solid like a telephone pole or a fire hydrant. These are what this offset crash test rating came with. And it, the idea was how little damage happened to the people inside of the car. Now, if they rearrange some of the interior components, yeah, there's near, knee airbags and a lot of that. So these are things that consumers need to think about. It's not just the crash test rating. Check out all of them, the IIHS tests, which is, you know, that they're an independent company. But, you know, I have a Mini Cooper. I put my son in a Mini Cooper since he was 16, and he's driving. He's fact, we're going to be doing Mini Takes the States starting tomorrow. It's a cross-country run from literally, in this case, San Francisco to Boston. Two years ago, it was New York to L.A., which we did it as well, and it's a blast. I thought, there's 1,200 minis meeting us here in Buffalo. We're going from here to Bethlehem and to Boston. So if you see us, wave. It looks like improv everywhere. It's crazy. As long as there's not like 20 clowns that get out of each car. That would be very bad. If that no, happens, we haven't then done we... that, but they, they are trying to see how many <laughs> peeps fit in the car in Bethlehem. I so believe it. As hey. we speak, is seeing how many peeps fit inside. <laughs> All right, so we, 
we talked about BMW earlier, and we showed a quick clip of BMW against Tesla in the premium electric market. I know we've talked about Tesla and a lot of the problems that they're having here. Is BMW yep. now primed to become the premium electric car because of all those issues that Tesla's having? I believe they are, and I'll tell you why. It's infrastructure. You purchase a BMW i3, or I love the i8, and I don't like electric cars, but if you've got a problem, you go to a BMW dealer. And the BMW dealer says, hey, you know what? You can take the 7 Series, this other electric vehicle to drive while we repair your vehicle. They have collision. They have parts and service. There's someone you communicate with. That's great. It's called infrastructure. Tesla doesn't have that. And every time I say this, all the Tesla lovers out there get mad at me. But the fact is, if you've got a problem, and they've already had a Lemon Law 1 car, and they haven't sold that many in comparison to how many BMWs are sold, these are factors that people need to consider. If, if you like being tethered to a cord, I'm tethered to a cord right now. We all live via the electrical outlet for our cell phones. I don't want to do it for my car. I want to have a gas backup engine and I want to have infrastructure. If I got a problem and I'm doing a cross country run, I got to go somewhere and get it fixed now. I'm not going to sit there and wait for some guy. Well, we can get you in two weeks, Ed. Does that work for you? No, it doesn't. Yeah, I'm passing you know? on that one. Absolutely. Yeah, about, me a minute, too. about a minute left here. Chrysler and Nissan looking into claims their cars are the most hackable cars out mm -hmm. there. What's this about? Well, boy, they are on the internet saying this isn't true, this isn't really tested. These two guys who claim that they're from this hacking conference that's coming up, claiming that the uh, Jeep Cherokee, the Grand Cherokee, the Nissan Q50, and uh, the Cadillac Escalade were the most hackable vehicles. Now, I don't know, it's very difficult to hack a vehicle. There's so many separate systems and there's 24 plus computers on that car. You'd have to hack all of them at the same time in order to take control of that vehicle. I know we're talking about autonomous cars, but this is the negative side of autonomous cars. So before you go and buy one of those, another thing to think about, you know, but we're not there yet, but there will be some kid in some foreign country who's got nothing better to do other than to hack our vehicles. So they're all putting up firewalls and separating systems. So um, Nissan and Chrysler, as well as GM, are saying this is not proven. This is just hearsay. Well, the Charger and the Shelby did not need to have worries about hackers. So we're OK. Nope. It's there all about go. motors and power and having fun on the track. Love every second of it. Hey, listen, good luck oh, in yeah. the run. Enjoy yourself in the Coopers. We appreciate it. LaurenFix.com. Check out everything Lauren has got on automobiles as well. Joins us here weekly. We'll talk to you soon, Lauren. Be safe. Thank you. Take care. Take care now. After the break, let's preview what's ahead on the Steve Molesberg Show and On Point right here on Midpoint.